good day, our people of God once more. I'm happy to be with you again on this session uh, where I seek to communicate the burden of the Lord or the word of the Lord in relation to Zion and the gates of Zion. Uh, just in case you were not, you did not see the first uh, telecast, uh, let me just reiterate one or two things. Um, I believe that uh, the conveners of this meeting were very accurate in defining the burden of the Lord for the time because heaven right now is talking about Zion. Uh, there's actually uh, uh, a call from the realm of the spirit for the people of God to uh, uh, begin to f fix their gaze upon the realities of Zion. The, I said in the first meeting, in the first telecast, that uh, this is a prophetic meeting. And so um, while avoiding the temptation to just teach about Zion, I'm moving, pressing in to see what is the word of the Lord or what is the body and the concern of God you know, for his people you know, in relation to Zion. And that's exactly what I am doing. Uh, so right now this, this, in this session, I'm, I'm looking at a particular thought, a particular burden that's in my heart. I pray that in the name of Jesus, as you listen, God will give you understanding. I pray that there will be the opening of eyes, there will be the opening of ears, and the opening of hearts to receive the word of the Lord. And I ask God that you help me to communicate your word clearly to the people in this season, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, the last few months have been uh, very frightening months, you know, in the earth. When we were stepping into the year 2020, very few people would know that 2020 would turn out to be what it has turned out to be. Um, uh, people had all kind of expectations about what the year would be. The people called it the, the, uh, the decade of the, of, the, of the pay, of the mouth. <clears throat> and uh, uh, some people say the year 2020 is a year of vision. So we're going to see a lot of visions. Our eyes will be clear. Uh, we'll hear the word of the Lord. We'll proclaim very, very clearly. What many people did not see was the the onslaughts that will be revealed through the coronavirus. So the virus has come and it shook a lot of things. Uh, those who have, who have tracked, you know, and tried to ask what is the meaning of the virus, like at the time when it began, at the beginning, a part of what I did was set my heart to find out what exactly is this. Uh, ad admittedly, uh, I did not see the corona coming. And as a lot of, a lot of my prophetic friends too didn't quite see it. And I think largely, uh, the large part of the church didn't see it. There are one or two people who had inklings, like there will be this or there will be that, but we didn't quite nail it, you know, as we ought to. Uh, but I believe that God is doing something in the prophetic realm, sharpening our prophetic antenna so that we can see very, very clearly, you know, in the times to come. However, uh, the year, at the beginning of the, the, of the, of the coronavirus, there's a lot of uh, pandemonium. There's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, you know, all, all over the place. Uh, believers were holding conferences, like coronavirus conferences. People were praying against it. People were praying for it. There was just all kind of confusion. And I'm looking at the grapevine of the church, and there is no coherent voice to define to, for us, to tell us that this is what is happening, and this is how, to, this is how to, uh, to react to it, this is how to respond to it. In the midst of that, my heart began to, like, look out to God and reach out to see what he would say about this. And I, I didn't say too much. I didn't labor too much before uh, uh, the Lord made it clear to me that this coronavirus is not a spirit of death. Uh, in other words, it did not come with the main intention to kill people. It might employ death as part of a strategy to, uh, to accomplish its goal. But its goal is not to kill people. There are things that are less than corona that kills people, like the malaria kills more people, or have killed more people, you know, uh, there are diseases that have killed more people in the past, you know, than the, 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 the bird flu and all of that, uh, Ebola virus and all that have killed more people in the past, you know, than this, you know, but there's something about this, you know, that, was, that, that, that has a fame, that has a name, that was widespread, and we may, we may argue that it's because we're in the age of the internet and there's a greater connectivity and all of that. Notwithstanding, uh, those were the vehicles that the Lord used or that, that has been employed, you know, for this thing achieving its objective. The Lord showed me that the coronavirus is actually a, di a disruptive wind. It is a force of change. It's a wind of change. Its main object is to disrupt the order of the earth, to, 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 to break the present arrangement and then to create a platform for a brave new world to emerge. And we saw that in the midst of it, while people were busy, you know, grappling with, 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 with some disease or some imagined disease, and people were dealing with the fear of the virus, there were those who were actually taking advantage to push things, to shift economies, to, 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 to pass legislations, to do all kinds of stuff. Some people were so terrified, so afraid, they were hiding in their houses, hiding in their, in, in their, 
in their closet. As a matter of fact, as I'm talking right now, there are still people who have not returned to church because they are still terrified that there's corona out there. But I walk into, I walk around the streets, I go to the market, I see all of these Muslim boys and these Muslim girls and these traders, and they come day in, day out, and when you come tomorrow, they are still there. They are not afraid of the thing. But for some reason, it was hyped, but it's in the hype. That is where the magic, or that's where the wonder of that, of that disease is. It's a wind of change. It came to disrupt the earth, to, 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 to bring forth a new order altogether. Part of what intelligent people in the world are doing right now is they're trying to define what are the levels of disruptions and what are the kind of disruptions. Trying to understand it so they can position themselves to take advantage of the changes. Now, many people in the church are not even bothered about that. We're busy fighting one another. Uh, we're busy uh, just uh, 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 holding on, arguing whether or not to wear masks to church or to wear face masks to church or not wear face masks. I was looking at a, a, at a photograph yesterday you know, that uh, somebody posted in a group that I'm a part of, of, of the, city, the, the nation of Tanzania. The nation of Tanzania, at the beginning, the president told them that the blood of Jesus is greater than any coronavirus. And if you bait yourself in the blood of Jesus and confess the blood of Jesus, he's able to give you a, a, a protection from these things. I saw the Tanzanians inside of the, airport, inside of the stadium. They, 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 there was no lockdown in that, in that country. There was no use of face masks and all of those things. And they do not have coronavirus, COVID-19, in their nation. How did that happen? It's because the, the thing actually is not that spirit of death that we thought it was. It's a wind of change. Its intent is to crystallize a new world. And then that new world is being born. But one of the things that stood out in the midst of a crisis while we're trying to grapple with that was the reality of this world called Babylon. There is a world. I mean, like, the world is created by, by God. The earth is a lot. But the software... The, the, the way we interact with the earth, you know, is called Babylon. The system of Babylon has been that thing that has cradled man from the onset since, the, since Babel, since that intelligence was, was injected into humankind. Babylon, the civilizations of the earth, the intelligence of the earth, the things that have been built, the wisdom of the earth, the, the, the knowledge of the earth and all that, the way that men execute life on the earth have been with us for several, several years. And even as believers, after we got saved, Christ came into our spirit. And God, through the Holy Ghost, came to rest inside of us. And yet we were not removed from Babylon. Many of us are still in, as a matter of fact, all of us are still in Babylon in one way or the other. And Babylon is, 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 is described as that, that uh, mother of Harlot and of all the abominations of the earth. So whatever it is that Babylon gives, or Babylon does, it generates abomination. What is abomination? That which God hates. That which is abhorrent, that which holds God at bay, that which drives God at bay. Babylon is a city of corruption, is a city of injustice. Babylon as an empire, you know, was a home of all the, 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 the cultic dimensions of the earth, all the spiritisms of the earth, all the, 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 the polytheistic dimensions where men worship other gods or many gods, the priority of God, that's what Babylon gave. Babylon has ceded to the earth knowledge of other gods. Babylon has ceded to the earth the occult dimensions. Babylon has ceded to the earth things that are not God. Babylon is the king of idolatry. So whenever you touch anything, any touch, any frequency that does not put God as central and as the, the Lord alone, you are touching Babylon. Now we've all lived in Babylon. Every one of us, the way we execute life came out of Babylon. And uh, in the book of Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream where he was shown an image that had head of gold, uh, 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 breast and arms, you know, of, of, of silver, belly and thigh of brass, and then legs of, of iron, and then feet of iron mixed with clay. And then uh, when he saw this image, he was terrified. And for some reason, he could not remember the image at the time that he woke up. So he called his magicians and uh, his astrologers and all of those uh, people who did curious arts and said, I had a dream this last night. I can't even remember what it is. I need you to tell me the dream, and I need you to tell me the interpretation of the dream. Well, uh, to cut long story short, they were unable to do that, and they said to him, uh, what the king asks is an impossible task. Only the gods can give that answer, and unfortunately their dwellings are not with men. The king was angry. He said they should kill them. But while Ariok went to kill them, he came to the house of Daniel, knocked on the door. I don't know if he knocked, but he broke down the door. He says, Daniel, I need to kill you right now. And then he says, hush, my friend. Why is this? What, what really is the issue? And Aaron says to him, uh, the king has a dream and none of the magicians are able to interpret the dream. And so the king has commanded to put you guys to death. And then Daniel asks for time, you know, to, 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 uh, to save the face of God concerning the dreams. Now we're told later on that Daniel comes before the king. He tells the king his dream. 
And then he tells him the interpretation. This is a dream. You, O king, are this head of gold. After you, there shall be another kingdom inferior to yours. And after that, a third kingdom. And after that, a fourth kingdom. And in the, you saw this image standing. And while you were looking at this image, there was a stone cut without hands that came and struck the image at his feet of iron mixed with clay. And then destroyed everything. It became like the, so, the, 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 the chaff of the summer threshing floors. The wind came and blew it away until there was no trace. I want you to take note of that. There was no trace of it found. But this little stone that was cut without hands began to become a mountain and grew and grew and expanded and then filled the earth. Now, because we're not teaching, uh, let me just go ahead to, to, to announce, the, the, uh, to bring forth the word of the Lord or the burden of the Lord. We know that the stone is Zion and that uh, the, the, the stone actually cut without hands is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the rock or the mountain is Zion because Jesus Christ is a stone that is laid in Zion. God says, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. A tri stone, a precious cornerstone. He that believes in him, you know, shall not uh, shall, shall not be confounded or shall not make haste. Now, this stone began to fill the earth after the stone had first destroyed all of the image, and the, the wind had blown away everything so that there is no trace of it. Now, uh, we say in prophetic scripture, I was sitting in church yesterday, that right now the kingdom of Babylon no longer exists. I mean, that fiscal Babylonian kingdom is no longer there. The fiscal Middle Persia is no longer there. The fiscal Greece as it existed at that time is no longer there. And the fiscal Rome as it existed is no longer there. But what all of these kingdoms have precipitated down to the ages are still with us. The, the knowledge, the philosophies, the ideologies, the way of life, the intelligences, the way that we connect, the way we do commerce, the way we relate, and all of those things, that the way humans execute their life on the earth, what we call human civilization, what we call civilization, what we call human intelligence are things that have been passed down to us through the years, through this channel that we call the, 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 the nations of the earth. Now, the good news is that, so, so you can say in summary that all of these things are Babylon. All of these things are represented inside of that head of gold or inside of that thing that is called Babylon. But now God says that uh, in the last days he's going to judge Babylon. And when Babylon is revealed as a woman sitting on a scarlet uh, a colored beast in the book of Revelations, she is called Mystery Babylon the Great, the, the, the mother of harlot and abominations of the earth. The Bible says that uh, uh, the, the kings of the earth have committed whoredom of fornication with her. And then not only the kings of the earth, but all, all, the, all the inhabitants of the earth have drunk into the wine of her, of her lewdness. So what... Even though we are believers, even though we are Christians, as many of us are in, as are in, uh, in, in Babylon, have partaken of some lewdness, some fornication, some abhorrent thing, some stuff that is totally that totally negates the, the, the essence, the principles, and all of that of God. It's called Babylon. But the scripture says to come out of her, my people, because I'm about to judge Babylon. Now, part of the word of the Lord to us right now, it is time to begin to come out of Babylon. During the lockdown, uh, our I saw the essence of Babylon, and I saw how Babylon is a fickle thing to trust in. Uh, we could no longer meet in church. I mean, even believers could no longer physically meet. And then some people began to rejoice that, thank God for the online platforms. We can now meet online. But we started to meet online, and then when we mentioned the word God or we did some stuff, they began to take down our videos. They began to shadow ban us. So we, we came to a realization quickly that even the online, you know, is not even our thing. That the online belong to some other people or belong to the Babylonians. And then they're beginning to censor. I heard uh, Tommy Arami speak about how they couldn't send a lot of uh, 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 mails to people on their mailing list. So when they found out, why is it that we're, we're trying to reach people on our mailing list and then we can't reach them? And then uh, they found that actually it's because you use the name God. And because you use the name God, we're, we're, we're cutting you down. So even that online that we think we can meet physically, let's go online. What if they cut us off? What if they make it impossible for us to meet online? So what will we do? We have been built to, to, to rely upon these systems of the earth, upon these technologies of the earth, upon all of these things that have been crafted by men. And I began to hear very clearly inside of my heart, it is time for us to begin to build our own alternative systems. It is time for us to begin to build Zion. And this is a call in the spirit. Zion is unlike Babylon. Zion is perfection. Zion is brilliant and Zion is real. 
as as real as babylon is there is also an alternative world called zion there's an alternative reality called zion and the church has not cared about building zion the church has not cared about building about about about, about taking hold of the reality of zion we have cared about just managing making do you know inside of babylon but the lord wouldn't have that anymore it's like israel you know are living in goshen in in the land of egypt israel was comfortable in goshen their big brother jo joseph you know was a big man in, in in the kingdom and they had they had things going for them of course they were they, 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 they were nomads or they, 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 they were cattle rarers and the land of goshen was good for their trade and so while they were there they were comfortable but one one person was not comfortable and that was god god did not want them in egypt no matter how comfortable egypt was for them being in egypt was not god's plan it was an interim thing it was some place that was supposed to be, 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 be cradled and hidden for a time from the plagues in the earth. And then there's a prophetic significance to that. Because out of Egypt, I have called my son. Needs to be symbolized somewhat. And so the sons of God, because Israel is my first son, is my firstborn, God says. The, the sons of God are going to be in Egypt. But God will call them forth out of Egypt as he will later call them forth out of Babylon. So in the meantime, they're in Egypt. But uh, while they're having a good time in Egypt, God isn't having a good time in Egypt. Egypt was not their destination. The destination was a land of promise. The land that flows with milk and honey. That was what God promised Abraham. And so while they're in Israel, in Egypt, no matter how much Egypt is supplying them, they are not in the will of God. They are not in the perfect plan of God. They are not in the place of God's joy and God's preferred uh, destination for them. And so at some point, what would God do? God began to trouble Israel, Egypt. He raised up a Pharaoh who had no respect to Joseph. The Bible says a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Now, knew not Joseph does not mean that he was ignorant of the history you know, of Egypt. It simply means that Joseph meant nothing to him. He didn't have respect to, to Joseph. He didn't have the emotional connection or the sense of allegiance to Joseph's loyalty. He didn't care about Joseph. And so he turned upon Israel and began to greatly afflict them. Why? So that when the nest begins, be, becomes hot for them and difficult for them, they will start seeking to come out. And so while Israel was in Egypt, Israel was an erased people, ignorant of the covenants of God. They were not serving their divine purposes. They were slaves, building the storm houses of Ramses and Petum. They were doing all of this stuff. They were not uh, the nation of priests that they were called to be. But God needed them out of that place. And so God stirred up that, that uh, hardship, and then they began to cry. Suddenly, they didn't like Egypt anymore. Egypt began to stink before them. They began to see the shortcomings of Egypt. They just wanted out. The same picture is what's happening today. The church has been comfortable inside of Babylon. We thought that, that all, we need, all, we, all, we, all, all we needed to have was God living inside of our spirit, was us being able to speak in tongues, to rumble, shambai, you know, and to uh, 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 maybe move in one or two power gifts, and then we're, we're waiting for the rapture to happen. Suddenly we found out that life is much more than that. The rapture is not going to happen tomorrow. Jesus is not going to come at the end of this year. And as a matter of fact, he may not come for quite a while. Now, we must hold the attitude that he will come, uh, he will come soon, but that soon is a relative soon we don't know how soon that soon is our children will te may teach this to their children who may teach it to their children children we do know that we're in the last days you know but if you're waiting for raptures to come and bail you out that's not the intent of god that's not the purpose of god now we're becoming intelligent now we're, we're, we're learning that what god actually does want is that we should build an alternative system not just not just alternative the ultimate system that is called zion we have to download that system you know we have to begin to ask what does it look like in our native land what does it look like in heaven because as as it is in heaven so on earth is the movement is the propensity of the church we have to be looking asking what why does heaven work heaven does not work because it is heaven Heaven works because there's a system there that runs heaven. There is something of Zion that is present in heaven that makes heaven what it is. Now, if that same thing is installed in the earth, then the earth will begin, will begin to function just the way the heaven functions. As a matter of fact, God does, is not even interested in the earth functioning like heaven functions. God is interested in the earth functioning the way heaven has never functioned. That is why he is looking for not to heaven, but to Zion. Not, to, not just to heaven, but to that realm of rest. That place where the, where, the, where the stock has finally found a resting place. The place where the best of the air now has a place to nest. The place where the Son of Man now has a place to rest, which is Zion. God is looking forward to Zion. God is looking forward to that place where finally he comes into the utmost expression of his essence 
sense of his being uncensored, unhindered, and he wants us building that. So there's a church right now that's on the face of the earth that is saddled with the responsibility of building Zion. Building Zion. Building Zion. And that's the word of the Lord to us. Wherever you are listening to this word, wherever you are, you're logged on to this teaching, this has to be a cry inside of your heart. We're no longer seeking to escape anymore. We're seeking to build Zion. We're seeking to, the word build Zion means to download Zion, to take hold of the dimensions of Zion and then represent them right here on the earth. Do you not look around and see Babylon and see the realities of the world that's around us? They are built by someone. I quoted a scripture in church the other day that every house is built by some man, but he that builds all things is God. Every house is built by some man. Nebuchadnezzar said, standing upon the, upon the high porches you know, of, of Babylon, he gazed upon that lofty, glorious city. And you need to read something about, the, about Babylon, about what Babylon looked like. The world has never experienced before or after that, that kind of majesty expressed in an empire. No wonder it is called the head of gold. It says, you, O king, are this head of gold. And everything that comes after you is inferior to you. So Babylon itself is majestic. Babylon itself was wonderful. Babylon itself is something. When John, the beloved, saw Babylon in the, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says he wondered after her with great admiration. He was out. He was like, oh my God. You know, he saw the intricacies, the perfection, the beauty of the sin until the angel rebuked him and said, why do you, why do you marvel after this sin? I've not come to show you her praise. I've come to show you her judgment. Come and see the judgment of the whore. But actually, Babylon has its own, its own lure, its own allurement, its own glory. We're told that after Cyrus said the people could return back to Zion, the Israelites who did not want to return they didn't want to go back to Zion. The beauty of Babylon was, was captivating. They had been slain. They had been slain by the beauty, by the brightness, by the, the splendor, the glory of, of, of Babylon. Because Babylon has its own glory. So, so, so some people don't want to leave Babylon. They think that Babylon is majestic. But the Lord is saying to the church right now, it is time for you to look away from Babylon, turn away from Babylon, and begin to build up Zion. So Nebuchadnezzar says that they walking upon the porches, upon the balconies, looking upon that glorious city, and says, it's not this... Babylon that my hands have built. God was angry with him and then God sent him into the wilds, you know, for, 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 for seven years or for seven seasons. Now, but the point is this, my hands are built. Babylon was built. Everything you see is built. You know, I, 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 I was talking in church the other day about how I've seen photographs of future cities, you know, layers of cities, electromagnetic suspensions. I've seen uh, 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 images of future cars, of future technologies, future civilizations, unthinkable things. And I'm thinking, how do people even go to think these things, to dig up these things? But somehow there are people in the earth, you may call them scientists, you may call them, you know, designers or whatever, but they're not just designers or scientists. They're actually builders. They're apostolic people who have the capacity to tap into depth, to bring forth the depths of Babylon, to bring forth the beauty of Babylon. So Babylon is still being built. It's still being constructed. Recently, during the, the, the lockdown, we saw some people, uh, 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 the, 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 the Tony Fauci's, the, 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 the Bill Gates, and a number of those cronies, you know, together, seeking to bring new dimensions into earth, seeking to redefine the borders of reality, trying to push other things into earth. What they're doing is they're building, they building Babylon. And the Lord is saying at this time, instead of just shouting, just crying, these people are doing this, they are not doing that, they are not trying to bring the, the, the pedophilia, they are not trying to do the LGBT, they are not trying to do this. These people are building Babylon. Why don't you build Zion? And that is the call to the church right now. We need to, to, to come away from, 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 from crying about what Babylon is and understand that there is an alternative, there is a Zion, there is a stone cut without hands. That whose presence eventually would level this thing we call Babylon and then fill the whole earth. Let us now build Zion. I believe that the Lord is communicating to us right now a dimension of the prophetic that does not proceed too much in our ability to foretell future things, but proceeds in our ability to look into the eternal antitype of nature that enables us to look into what is crafted in the first originality of all being. That enables us to see the things that are couched inside of the Godhead himself and to bring them forth according to divine counsel and ordination, as Jen Leeds tells us in the prophecy. The Lord is bringing forth a new dimension of the prophetic that enables us to tap into divine architecture in the spirit and build. The city lies four squares and the city had 12 gates. 
The number 12 is the number of divine government. It's also the number of the apostolic. Now, this tells me that there's something apostolic about the gate. The gate is a, 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 a apostolic operations. Now, if you know anything about apostles, apostles are wise master builders. They're called to build. This is Paul's word in describing himself in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, as according to the grace given, of God given to me as a wise master builder, I have built. Now there are wise master builders or apostolic people having prophetic capacity to look into divine architecture and bring it forth in this time. If you are a prophet out there, let your prophecy go beyond the ability to tell people their, their plate numbers. Let it go beyond the ability to, to comfort people and tell them it will be well with them. Begin to see designs in the spirit. And then there are people who are called as prophets who may not be preachers, called as preachers. You are a prophet, but you are in the banking sector. You are a prophet, but you are in government. And part of what you're supposed to do is download policies, download intelligences and systems for crafting civilizations and economies and those kind of stuff. There are people who are economists who will actually build alternative systems for, for concourse and transaction. We have to believe in Zion. Some people think that it's not possible to build something alternative. They think that Zion, Babylon has built everything and the world as it is is formidable. It cannot be shaken. But you saw how small Corona almost emptied the world. Businesses failed. Airlines were grounded. Hotels, there are businesses right now that have not recovered. There are people right now who are thrown into, whose life was scattered, thrown into all kinds of things. Children wouldn't go to school. The world shook just because one little virus one little virus came in. So that's how flimsy and that's how, that's how, 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 how petty you know, Babylon can be. It looks formidable on the outside, but a little thing will shake it. As a matter of fact, in just one hour, her whole jud her judgment will come. She will be brought into ruins. So we think in our mind that what other, what other way can we live apart from the way we live right now? Oh, there are ways. Zion is real. Zion is real. You've got to believe in Zion. You've got to believe in another intelligent, another way of connection. Zion is real. We can connect. The brothers can connect to another intelligent. We can have transactions, banking transactions or, 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 or commercial transactions and all kinds of things that are not based upon what the world is. What we have here are things that are built by hand. But Zion is not something that is built by hand. The Bible says the stone was cut without hand. The stone is not cut with human intelligence, human effort. Part of the thing that has weakened the church right now is that we've tried to build even church with the tools of Babylon, with the wisdom of Babylon, with the principles of Babylon. And so the hand of man is all over the thing we call church. The man's plan, man's will, man's program, man's agenda, man's arrangement, man, man, man. God is calling us to a place of purity because the city of, that we call Zion is a pure city, pure gold, pure light. Everything is pure. There is no mixture. There is no contrariness. There is no ground of mixture. Part of the thing the Lord is saying to the church right now is begin to purge yourself. There is presently in the earth right now the movement of Christ to bring purification to his people. The Lord is speaking and saying divorce yourself from every marketing principle, every Babylonian principle by which you have built, promoted your ministry, promoted yourself, promoted your life and all of those things. Come out of Babylon and be separate, said God. It's time to begin to build your ministries on the pure principles of God. On the pure, for example, we, we, we think if there were no Facebook, would this meeting not be advertised? Were there not ways that we were doing things before the Facebook came? Are there not distribution channels of heaven and ways that heaven executes you know, publicity? How come we're not looking for those things? Do angels not still go to tell people that uh, something is here, go over there? We've had meetings where... People said, I came because in a, in a dream, somebody told me to come to this meeting. And all those guys, we've heard those kind of things. John Baptist was in the wilderness. He was not on Facebook, he was not on Instagram. He wasn't even on CNN. And yet the whole of the world came to see him. The Bible says Jesus left the wilderness in the power of the Holy Ghost. And his fame went abroad. There are still angels that do rumors. There are still transmission channels of, of, of Zion that we need to excavate and rediscover. We have leaned too much on Babylon. If we don't come out of Babylon, the judgment of Babylon will affect us also. But the word of the Lord to us right now is it is time to come out of Babylon. And it is time to build Zion. Discover Zion. Let Zion become real to you. Begin to operate Zion. Begin to live in Zion. David built a city in Zion. And the Bible says, and David entered in and he lived inside of the strongholds of Zion. It's important to know that he lived in the stronghold of Zion. He left Ziklag his own personal stronghold, and came and lived in Zion. How many of us are living in Zion? How many of us have our lives uh, 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 inspired and pushed, you know, by the reality of Zion? 
it is time for us to come back to Zion. I believe this is a word of the Lord to us. Uh, somehow, I know that you've been blessed. Uh, I want to say a word of prayer to you, uh, wherever you are. I pray that the prophetic will stir itself in your heart in a new realm of creativity that God is imparting to the church. That these eyes will begin to take hold of dimensions of Zion and begin to bring them forth, begin to craft them. Let there be new levels of, 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 of imagination, new levels of creativity, new levels of perfections, new level of brilliance as you see the designs in God and bring them forth and then manifest them and live in them. Let the apostolic grace of a builder rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all.